Oh, hi. I'm Brian. You probably know me from my blog, abject.ca. You've just caught me blogging. I've got something to say. I wrote it on the blog today, and it doesn't matter much to me as long as it's read. So I've been blogging since 2001. I remember being just absolutely enraptured by the fact that I could just, in a relatively easy interface, start a site that looked decent, the HTML worked, the archiving worked. Uh, I didn't need to be a web designer, a database administrator. I could just get a site up and running. So I quickly, I think it was late 2002, I started blogging for my job. I had a really strange education technology job. There was nobody else at my university that did what I did. And the blog allowed me to connect with people like me at other institutions around the world. And it quickly became apparent that this was a fantastic way to capture what we were doing, to connect with others, and to build on each other's work as we go. I remember times where uh, I had a fellowship at a university in Barcelona. And uh, um, when I arrived at the fellowship and we started doing the work, I realized I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, I remember sitting with this pit in my stomach because this whiteboard was filling up with technical specifications I didn't understand. And uh, I was just thinking, I'm screwed. But the one thing I asked was, can I blog this? So I did the best I could. I, I, I basically just sketched out the challenge that we had. And I tried to describe the problem we were trying to solve. And the comments just started to come in. And immediately we were getting tools we could prototype. And eventually Eric Duvall, rest in peace Eric, uh, ended up providing a link to a project that was actually highly relevant to what we were doing. And that comment alone salvaged the fellowship to the point that I actually got invited back. Uh, so when you have experiences like that where you putting something out there, even when it's half formed, and you become part of this learning community that's collaborating on the fly like that, and you end up creating something far better than what you could ever do within your own office and within your own team, as great as your team may be. Uh, once you start experiencing that, you get addicted to that feeling, and it really changes the way you think about work. So partly for that reason, um, I started, along with my team, uh, uh, a, pro a project called UBC Blogs, which now has tens of thousands of blogs uh, active on that server at UBC. Um, and I blogged there for a long time, but in part because of some of the uh, discussions around the reclaim movement, uh, people like Audrey Waters and Jim Groom, uh, started to think more about having my own domain, my own space, owning my own data. Uh, and I ended up moving my blog to where it is now at abject.ca. So yeah, after years of having my blog uh, at UBC Blogs, I started to think more and more uh, about the arguments that people like Audrey Waters and Jim Groom were putting forward uh, about reclaiming your domain and your data and what that kind of ownership Brian, means. who are you talking to down there? Mom! I'm trying to make a video! Yeah, what are you doing? Where was I? Anyway, yeah, reclaiming my domain. So uh, I set up my own space, got my own place, so to speak, which I guess I should do in other parts of my life, at uh, abject.ca. And uh, uh, it's been a very powerful thing. I think sometimes people think that blogging software is just something that you use for blogging, like an online journal. Uh, it's really important to know that the tools that people use for blogging, like WordPress or Drupal, uh, actually are the back end for some of the most powerful online learning environments out there. Uh, the OERU uses it for their online courses. Uh, I had the pleasure of working with a group of people uh, with the University of Guadalajara where Alan Levine uh, incorporated the Challenge Bank framework for a project there and it was a very rich open online environment and those are all resources that are readily available for anybody. Um, at the same time, sometimes these tools can be a little complicated for new users to use. So Mr. Levine, uh, when he was working with us here at Thompson Rivers University, uh, developed this framework we call SPLOT, which essentially, we haven't quite figured out what the acronym means, but it's something like simplest possible learning online tool. 
Um, so we really simplified the writing interface and we found that it's really, really helped for new users who've never used an online writing tool before to get involved with it. Um, there's a fantastic law course um, taught by Professor Katie Sykes here at TRU, which uh, uses that framework. And then on the other end, you can have something like DS-106, um, which is such a multifaceted beast. It's like when people go and look at it for the first time, it's really hard for them to make sense of it. It's less of an online course and more like a way of life uh, with sites and blogs from all around the world networked and feeding into it all the time. That approach seems nuts. And then you see other people, though, taking that connected courses framework, people like Ken Bauer, uh, taking that same kind of infrastructure but doing it in a more structured kind of course-like way. So you can really see the diversity that these open frameworks let you do. Um, and then that's something I really like, too, is a project like that once was an art and reconciliation open online course here at TRU. Uh, the professor, Ashok Mathur, has moved on to another institution. He's moved on to other projects on the theme of art and reconciliation for uh, Canada's Indigenous peoples. And what's been cool to watch about that site is, is it's kind of transformed itself from a course type environment into something much more like an artistic presentation space. The flexibility of the tool makes that very, very easy to do. But again, at the end of the day, I think blogging is about sharing ideas and connecting with the community. Um, Dave Lane, uh, technological wizard of the OERU, is modeling that beautifully on the brand new OERU tech blog. Um, it's also just so amazing to see someone like Tom Woodward who runs one of the best WordPress installations for education I've ever seen. And he writes multiple posts where he's sharing the plugins he's doing and the process he uses and how he manages to support nearly 20,000 users by himself. Uh, you have people like Martha Burtis, who was one of the original architects of the whole domain of one's own infrastructure. And she writes posts where she talks about every single component and the lessons she's learned. And I just think about all the pain and suffering <laughs> She's sparing other sysadmins or people like me who would like to implement these kinds of ideas. Um, but it doesn't have to be people that are experts in their field that where sharing can be really beneficial. Uh, my colleague Tanya Elias, um, she's really interested in the idea of using open analytics in open environments for learning analytics. And that's a new idea. And I'm not aware of a lot of people doing this sort of stuff. So she's out there writing posts in that very formative stage, talking about the way she frames that problem. Um, and then just, it's a space too for practitioners to talk about some of the more complicated and difficult issues. I'm just this morning reading a blog post by Martin Weller uh, from the UK. And as of now, there's 29 comments on this post where he's talking about what does it mean to be an open educator at a moment right now where it feels like uh, rational thought <laughs> isn't really uh, valued the way it used to be. So what does that mean for open education? And there's all these fantastic comments from people all around the world, the UK, North America. Uh, I see Bahamali from Egypt uh, offering a post-colonial uh, lens on the discussion. And uh, Kate Bowles from Australia coming in at the end. And then I see on Twitter this morning, Kate is talking about this discussion and I think she just frames it beautifully. What makes an exchange like this possible? Tech, infrastructure, relationships. None without the others. And I guess that's it. I mean, that's to me is what's so powerful about blogs. It's open tools for people uh, that control their own message, control the way it's presented, yet are able to engage in these very flexible, um, fluid online discussions. Um, and I've never seen anything like it, and I still love blogging. I've got something to say I wrote it on the blog today And it doesn't matter much to me As long as it's read What are you gonna say? What can we say? Hey, do you have any popsicles? <laughs> <laughs> I'm vlogging.